the people who are asked to time and again, day after day, actually physically put the dogs down is what they go through, what they take home with them um, is something that I don't think you can put into words. It crushes every part of your being. And we ask them to do this every day. Hi everybody, my name is Melissa and I am the executive director of Marley's Mutt's Dog Rescue. As a large breed dog rescue and a 501c3 organization, we believe it's our responsibility to start to bring to light some of the things that are going on in our animal shelters, um, both in our county at the state level and at the federal level. Over the next several weeks, we're gonna be sharing a series of videos with you from the perspective of the folks who have actually been on the front lines and worked in our shelters, who understand what it's like to have to euthanize perfectly healthy animals and to make the decisions as to who lives and who dies. This isn't going to be our normal fun content where we see puppies getting adopted and being played with. This is gonna be heavy stuff, but we do hope that you'll follow along with us and rally behind as we work towards uh, changing the world of animal wellness. Uh, my name's Connor. I'm currently employed with Marley's Mutt's Dog Rescue and I'm the ranch manager here. Uh, so I help take care of all of the dogs and make sure that they're getting all of their needs met while they're here. Uh, I used to work at the City of Bakersfield Animal Care Center. I spent a year volunteering there and then was employed there as the animal behaviorist for about two years. So while I was employed at the shelter in 2019, we euthanized 1,436 dogs. That's 3.9 dogs a day. Uh, in 2020, which was our lowest year due to COVID, we were restricting intakes and we got a lot more dogs out than we typically would. Our euthanasia rate was still 670 dogs for a total of 1.8 per day. In 2021, we euthanized 1,156 dogs, and that's about 3.17 dogs per day. So we predominantly see large dogs, German Shepherds, Huskies, and Pit Bulls are the most populous breeds in our shelters. The shelters are currently flooded with moms and puppies. When I started, we didn't euthanize puppies. The shelters euthanize puppies now. There's a few different reasons for euthanasia. Uh, the first being behavioral euthanasias. So if you have a dog that comes in that's what we call offensively aggressive, um, those aren't really safe to release back into the community. So those dogs being bite risks um, and just overall threats to the public are euthanized. So my job as the animal behaviorist when I was at the shelter was to get my hands on every dog that came through the facility. That was to leash them, see how they did being leash handled. A lot of times I would put actual physical body pressure on the dog, um, touch their tails, touch their paws, touch their mouth, their nose, their ears, looking for any kind of indication that if we sent this dog into a home with a family and a kid grabbed it, it wasn't gonna turn around and bite. Obviously some level of communication saying that the dog was uncomfortable is acceptable, um, but we were specifically looking for what would be a threat to the community. Uh, we also did dog to dog assessments, so making sure again, we didn't have offensively aggressive dogs that would immediately target and fixate on another dog. Uh, so we were looking predominantly for any type of offensive aggression. Um, defensive behavior, depending on the circumstances, is something that you can address. Um, and then just some dog selectivity, again, is something that we could address and didn't necessarily mean life or death for the dog. You also have medical euthanasias. So a dog that is severely sick or injured is euthanized. When COVID started, everybody was shut down. So people who normally got their dogs vaccinated stopped getting their dogs vaccinated. That created a backlog at the vets that we still haven't recovered from and created a crisis with the stepper. Uh, it was the worst any of us had ever seen it. And 
What really ended my time at the shelter was I was asked to euthanize 36 puppies in a single day because of the amount of distemper we had at the shelter. Um, and these were dogs that were coming in with symptoms already showing they were not contracting it at the shelter. Um, but once we did intake on them, there wasn't much that we could do and we had exposed the entire puppy population to distemper and we ended up having to euthanize everything in our puppy kennels. Uh, so euthanizing for space is something nobody wants to do. Um, but our shelters are so overrun when you come into work and every kennel is full and you get a call from an ACO that they've already picked up six stray dogs and you have to figure out where to put them. That means that certain dogs are going to be on the euthanasia list and put to sleep to make room for these new dogs. If you don't have any super sick dogs, if you don't have any offensively aggressive dogs, that makes choosing the dogs who are gonna die really difficult. So what my job ended up kind of turning into was finding the smallest flaw or defect in a dog and using that as justification to kill it. Whenever possible, we tried to go with offensively aggressive dogs. Those are the easiest, and I say that relatively, easiest choices to make. A dog that wants to eat you, um, you realize you don't really have any outcomes for. Um, but when you're faced with the decision of euthanizing for space, it's heartbreaking. You're looking at how long a dog's been there. If it's been there for four months and no rescues want it and nobody's adopting it, how do I say that this dog who's been here for two days, who hasn't really had a chance to get picked up by a rescue or get adopted? Well, I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and put that one down because I like this one that's been here for four months. So you look at things like length of stay, you look at things like breed. When half of my shelter population are black pitties, how do I keep a black pity off the youth list? We have waves where the shelter will be full of pits and then a month later it's full of shepherds and a month later it's full of huskies. So depending on when you're euthanizing for space, you're looking at whatever breed you have the most of and those are the ones that make it onto the youth list. The last about six to seven months that I worked at the shelter, we started really struggling with our juvenile dogs. Um, dogs that were anywhere from about five months of age to about 12 months of age. Um, when people want a puppy, they want a puppy puppy. When they want a dog, they want a dog. They want an adult that doesn't have those puppy characteristics. So you have this age group of puppies that's a really weird age. They're not puppy puppy, but they're not adult. And we watch these dogs come in at four or five months of age and they sit there and they spend four months, five months at the shelter growing up in the shelter, um, which is horrible for them developmentally. You know, they're not getting the socialization that they need. They're not getting exposed to different stimulus, um, different environments, sights, sounds, people, dogs, cats, birds, everything. Um, and that's such a key part of their development that now, you know, you've advocated for months for this puppy, it just turned a year old and now it has behavior issues because it grew up in a shelter. Um, so we're seeing an uptake in the number of juvenile dogs that are being euthanized because again, they're just not being adopted. Rescues aren't picking them up because they're bigger already. Even rescues are having a hard time getting adoptions for these juvenile dogs. So they don't want to take on 10 or 15 juveniles that are going to grow up in the rescue. There's so many different levels to the overpopulation issue that we're facing in Kern County. And it causes burnout across all levels of the staff at these facilities. From your kennel techs who are out there every day, feeding and cleaning up and petting and loving on all of these dogs. And oftentimes they're the ones who are asked to remove these dogs from the kennels and take to the euthanasia room. You have your inside staff who are trying to get adoptions, trying to network to rescues. So they're spending time with these dogs. They're taking photos with them. They're taking them home to see how they do in a home environment, to test them with little dogs or cats or you know, whatever the case may be. So they're forming bonds with these dogs and spending months advocating for them just to have them end up in the youth room. 
the amount of emotional trauma that that causes, it's horrific. Um, and you see a lot of burnout. Um, and that's being seen in the vet field as well, especially with sheltered vets who are oftentimes called on to do euthanasias. The people who are asked to time and again, day after day, actually physically put the dogs down is what they go through, what they take home with them um, is something that I don't think you can put into words. It crushes every part of your being. And we ask them to do this every day. And we get mad at them for doing it. And it's our fault as a community. We made this problem. We put it on the shelters. We put it on the rescues. And it's time to step up and take ownership for what our part in it was and help fix this problem. There are two key points that we really need to focus on, and one of that is spay and neuter your pets. Choose to be responsible and do that on your own. Don't wait until you're forced to. Spay and neuter your animals. Uh, second is if you care at all about the dog population, you need to start going to your city and county meetings. This problem is not going to be solved. This problem is not going to be discussed until there's some pushback from the community that says this is a priority, this is important, and we as the community want to see it addressed.